A California judge has sentenced a father to 11 years in prison, which I don't think is enough time at all, after drowning his four-year-old daughter in the church baptismal pool. We're going to get into all the details of this, guys, and a lot more in just a second. First, if you could, please like this video, share it, hit the bell, subscribe, and wear the glasses because I'm blind. Also, if you could, guys, consider making a generous donation here to our ministry as we're demonetized on YouTube. They don't support what we do. You could help us out in a major way, though, if you enjoy the daily video content we put out talking about end-time Bible prophecy headlines and our ministry here of getting people to Jesus Christ. You can help out through PayPal or Patreon. Even just five bucks a month on Patreon will get you bonus content. Also, we include the links to the YouTube videos there so you get all alerts when new content arrives. You can comment there, censorship free, send me direct messages. It's a great way to stay up to date with all the content that we put out here. And guys, also big reminder, go sub to me on Rumble. That's our backup in case we're kicked off of YouTube. We already post there. Another perk, when you're on Patreon, sometimes you get these videos early access through the alerts through Patreon when these go up on Rumble, sometimes before they even hit YouTube. So make sure you're checking that out if you want early access. Thank you to everybody already contributing, and for those of you thinking of doing so, thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. So let's talk about this California father, Gerardo Ordaz. He's been sentenced now to 11 years in prison. Voluntary manslaughter is the charge against him. There's also a charge for child abuse. You would think, well, of, of course, there should be. So how did this whole thing happen? This was at St. John the Baptist Catholic Church in Healdsburg, which is in Northern California. Now, this happened all the way back on November 20th, 2016, but the sentencing is just happening a couple of days ago. What took place here was this. The father had been on meth for days, reportedly, and also hadn't been sleeping at all, at least for three days, according to the judge. He believed that himself and also his two children. Now, at the time, the his son was nine. His daughter, Maria, was four. He says they believed they were being attacked by evil, according to the father. He goes down to the closest church he could find to where they were living there, which was St. John the Baptist Church, goes into the church to try to find a priest. Could not find a priest. So he takes the kids up to the front of the church, and he sees the baptismal there that's in the form of the cross there inside of the church. And he tells his kids to start drinking water immediately, the holy water there in the pool. And as he's doing this with his daughter, now according to him, he did not submerge her under the water. He said he just kept giving her water, giving her more and more and more, but her head, I, I guess, was kind of tilted down into it, and he just kept forcing her to drink all this water. And then she became unresponsive at that time, and he realized that she had drowned from what it was that he was doing. He actually ends up going, taking her, bringing his son. He went to a police station and asked for help. He was yelling it in both Spanish and English at the time. And this is when the police found out uh, that the girl had sadly been pronounced dead there. Now, at the time that he gets to the police station, this guy, the father, is completely naked. Okay, The son is only in a pair of shorts, and the daughter was fully clothed. At that point, he was sent off to a mental hospital uh, for treatment that lasted a couple of years. It wasn't until 2019, reportedly, before he was brought back before a judge again. Um, and while this is all going on, I don't know where you know his son was staying. The son is 14 now. And the abuse charge the judge gave him in this was because the son had to witness what the father did to his sister. The father had admitted it. I guess he had got himself cleaned up at the time. Uh, they had told him, you better plead, you know, voluntary manslaughter or you're facing even, you know, higher charges than that that could put you in prison for 25 years. And look, the whole thing about him being on the meth and him saying he was being attacked by evil. Look, you know this. Satan gets a lot of joy out of knowing that something like this occurred in a church. That this little girl lost her life in a church because this guy was all, you know, messed up on drugs. He hadn't been sleeping. He thinks he's being attacked. Well, I, I, no doubt in my mind, he was probably, you know, demon-possessed to some degree. All are all messed up from these drugs. No doubt about that. And he loses his little girl because of it. Now, four years old she was at the time that this happened. It's just tragic to see something like that take place. Uh, I think he deserves more time in prison. Maybe some people, you know, would disagree with that. Uh, but you know what? I don't know what kind of father, and again, I don't know where the mother is in this at all. I have no clue if there was a custody thing or, or what or why 
this guy was even in charge of his kids at the time this all happened in the first place. And also, you know, as far as the church goes, you know, you know, why didn't they have somebody, you know, around there? Did they not hear what was going on? Did they not know this guy was in there? Uh, all questions we don't have answers to, unfortunately. All I can tell you is this, this little girl is in heaven now with Jesus. She is not suffering. She is having the time of her life. No doubt about that. Uh, you pray for the son. You know, the father's going to prison for a long time. Uh, that God would guide his life. You know, being a teenager now, 14 years old, you know this has played a role on him. It has to have. There's no doubt about that. And who knows what else these kids might have been facing prior to that. I don't know if this is just some, you know, the first time this guy had been on drugs. I'm guessing not. Uh, but the son is going to need a lot of prayer as well. A lot of evil. The men's hearts are fixated upon evil continually, like the Bible said was going to happen in the last days. And that's why we do these videos. We talk about the prophetic news headlines going on around the world because Jesus Christ is coming back soon. Satan right now is doing everything he can to destroy as many as he can because he knows his time is short. But we want to get people to Jesus Christ through this ministry. We want to offer you the chance to receive him as your Lord and Savior right now. You could do this prayer in your own words, but I'll give you the steps that you need to bring it before the Lord. Here's the first thing that you want to do, and that's to acknowledge that you're a sinner. It's something that we all are, but God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for the sins of all the world. He died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. What you have to do, though, is repent of your sin. That means to turn from your sin, not just to say you're sorry, but to turn from a lifestyle, a habit, whatever it is in your life that goes against the word of God. You ask Jesus to forgive you. He'll wipe that sin away. The Bible says he won't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. I pray you make that decision today. I'll have more for you guys on this down below. You can let me know your thoughts. Don't forget the links to donate to our ministry are there as well. It is a great blessing if you could help us out. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.